Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Jana Vallabha Kirivaran Hari Jai Gopi Jana Vallabha Kirivaran Hari Yashodanandana Bhajajana Randana Yashodanandana Bhajajana Randana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Bhat Banamahan Sir Rudika Charja Ustro Tirtha Shri Srimad His Divine Grace Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai Iskand BBT Founder Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Bhad Paramahansa Parudhika Charja Ashto Tirtha Dushishima is Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Kijai Ananda Koti Vaishnava Vinda Kijai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Kijai Kantara Chimil Bhagavatam Kijai Samaveda Bhakta Vrinda Kijai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees all glory to Sri Guru and Gauranga. Narayanam Namaskritya Narang Chayav Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jai Madhiri Before reciting this Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, we should offer our respectful obeisances unto Lord Narayan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and to Nar Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasadeva, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Nashta Prayesha Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavatuttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki by regular attendance and classes on Srimad Bhagavatam and by rendering devotional service unto the pure devotee all that is inauspicious within the heart is destroyed almost to nil and loving devotion to the Supreme Lord who is glorified in transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya On this 26th day of January, 2020, in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, translation and commentary, by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are in Canto 4, entitled The Creation of the Fourth Order, Chapter 22, Prithu Maharaj's Meeting with the Four Kumaras, text number 15. You don't have anything. Well, let me give you something. You have a book? I have. 
Give, yeah, can you share with them? Okay, get a chair so you can sit too. I'll wait. I really want to hear Dharmaraj's mellifluous tones chanting. Okay, here we go. Text number 15. Tadaham kata vishrambha Sudido vastapasvinam Sampritche baba etasmin Chema ke nandasabhavet Tadaham kata vishrambha Sudido vastapasvinam Sampritche baba etasmin Che makke nanj sabavet Tadaham kata vishrambha Sudido vastapasvinam Sampritche baba etasmin Che makke nanj sabavet Tadaham kata vishrambha Sudado vastapasvinam Sampritche baba etasmin Che makke nanj sabavet Tadaham kata vishrambha Sudado vastapasvinam Sampritche baba etasmin Chema ke nanja sabavet Tadaham kata vishrambha Surida sampabasvita Sampitche baba etasmin Chema ke nanja sabavet Tat Well actually you've all got something, I'll just read them through Tat therefore aham I krita vishrambha being completely assured suridaha friend vaha our tapasvinam suffering material pangs some pritche wish to inquire bhave in this material world etasmin this chemaha ultimate reality kena by which means andasa without delay bhave can be achieved. Translation. Maharaj Prithu speaking to the four Kumaras. I am completely assured that personalities like you are the only friends for persons who are blazing in the fire of material existence. I therefore ask you how in this material world we can very soon achieve the ultimate goal of life. Purport. When saintly persons go from door to door to see those who are too much materially engaged, it is to be understood that they do not go to ask anything for their personal benefit. It is a fact that saintly persons go to materialists just to give real information of the auspicious. Maharaj Prithu was assured of this fact. Therefore, instead of wasting time by asking the Kumaras about their welfare, he preferred to inquire from them whether he could soon be relieved from the dangerous position of materialistic existence. This was not, however, a question personally for Prithu Maharaj. It was raised to teach the common man that whenever one meets a great saintly person, one should immediately surrender unto him and inquire about relief from the material pains of existence. Therefore, Srila Narottam Das Thakur has uh, said, or says, Sangsad Vishanale Divanishi Hiadwale, Judaite Na Kainu Upai. We are always suffering from material pangs, and our hearts are burning, but we cannot find any way out of it. The materialistic person can also be called a tapasvi, which means someone who is always suffering from material pains. One can get rid of all these material pains only when he takes shelter of the chanting of the Hare Krishna mantra. This is also explained by Narottam Das Thakur. Golokera prema dhana hari nama sankirtana rati na janmilo kene tai. Narottam, Narottam Das Thakur regretted that he did not pursue his attraction for the transcendental vibration of the Hare Krishna mantra. The conclusion is that all persons in this material world are suffering from material pains, and if one wants to get rid of them, 
he must associate with saintly persons, pure devotees of the Lord, and chant the Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. That is the only auspicious way for materialistic persons. Okay, I have to time out. I've got a garment here that if I put it on, I'm too hot and take it off, I'm too cold. So I'm going to choose for, now that I've cooled down from the kirtan a little bit, I think, and from my client stair climbing program. Just makes it hot. <coughs> Sorry for the delay. Om Jnana Timurandasya, Jnana Shalakaya, Chakshu Unmilatam Mena, Tasmai Shri Gurudevaha. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Sri Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So now, Prithu Maharaj is, with after all the preliminaries of glorifying the Kumaras, uh, and expressing his great appreciation for their presence. He's now getting down to business, so to speak, because there's no time to waste. These great souls, they don't stay anywhere for very long. Narada Muni himself is known for just spending a short time in each place. He was cursed that he couldn't stay anywhere for very long. So uh, each moment, each word is essential. And so now he's asking this, this uh, essential question, as Prabhupada explains, when we meet someone and when we encounter a source of knowledge that can really give us essential instruction, how we can achieve the ultimate goal of life, how we can get rid of the miseries of this material world, uh, we should take advantage of it as soon as possible and as deeply as possible. So taking the role of a conditioned soul, he, and, and expressing how he's assured, he's absolutely certain that he's going to get a, a useful answer from them. He, uh, he says, how in this material world can we very soon achieve the ultimate goal of life? Which is assumed uh, and explained as re the first uh, aspect of that uh, achievement is the cessation of all miseries. I think we've spoken about this before. How the original impetus for uh, striving for transcendental knowledge and transcendental practice and search should be to end the uh, suffering of birth, old age, disease, and death and rise up to the spiritual platform and attain our original uh, eternal uh, state. Now, of course, we don't know anything about that at first. So uh, the, the great fortune is that the, the, the realized souls, such as the Kumaras, such as Srila Prabhupada, they travel everywhere. They travel wherever they, could, uh, they can in the material world to try to deliver whoever responds, wherever there's uh, some, some uh, uh, receptive ears. As Krishna says famously, Manushyanam Sahasreshu Kastya Jaradi Siddhaye Yatatama Misaddhanam Krishna Mamvedi Tatvada that out of thousands and thousands of people, hardly one even strives for perfection, meaning under, strives to get out of this material world. And even those who are liberated to some degree, just like these Kumaras, they weren't really bhaktas at first, as we've explained, remember? They were Brahmavadis. They were Atmarama, just like Shukadev. But they weren't uh, full-on Vaishnavs. So as Krishna says here, even... Only, only a very, very rare soul will strive for perfection. Not perfection in making money, not perfection in enjoying the senses or any material thing, but perfection of cessation of material pains, rising up to the spiritual platform, attaining uh, even impersonal liberation. Hardly any strive for that. And those few who achieve some measure of that perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. So it's very rare. It's very rare, even, even among those who uh, uh, are aware that, there's, uh, uh, there, that there is a problem of birth, old age, disease, and death, that it's not so, and it's a, it's a soluble problem, and there are ways that, that are sources of knowledge and practice by which we can solve that problem. Uh, hardly one is, uh, can achieve it, especially in this age. This is what we learned at the beginning of Bhagavatam, how disqualified the people of this age are. Now, there, there's something 
that's very wonderful about uh, our great acharyas in that they're always looking for a way how to turn a disadvantage to an advantage. So, so the, the disadvantage of this age is that people are, they don't live very long. Remember, Prayan Upajya Sabha, Kalavasman Yuge Jana, Manda Sumanda Matayo Manda Bhagya Upadrata. It gives a list of problems. We don't live very long. First of all, generally, this striving for self realization or, uh, or God realization takes many, many, many years. The Prabhupada gives the example of Valmiki, who lived during Satya Yuga. He was a dacoit, you know. So his guru, you know, he, he didn't want to chant Rama. So then chant death. Mara, 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 Mara. So he ended up chanting Rama. Anyway, tricked <laughs> for 60,000 years. He's meditating and finally he achieved perfection, writes to Ramaya. So, uh, but here we are with our little 100 year max uh, lifetime. And most people aren't very healthy after a certain age. You know, the, their complete concern is just mitigating the, 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 the uh, fold, threefold miseries that are coming at them. But they don't know how to ultimately mitigate them, so they have all of these stopgap measures. Dukkau shadam tadabi dukkam. Prahlad says the remedy for the miseries cause more miseries. You know, so this is the nature of this world, of this Kali Yuga. It's, it's not... Uh, externally, it's, not, it's certainly not the best time for practicing yoga or any, any prolonged process like this, which is usually what it takes. So what to do? Manda Suman, they're lazy in the matter of self-realization. Uh, they're misguided if they have a little bit of impetus toward self-realization. Uh, un- therefore, unfortunate and always disturbed. There's so much disturbance now. You know, the, the, the suicide rate is going up. The state of mental illness is going up. People are, are disturbed in all kinds of ways. They can't make enough money. They, don't, they see the end of the world coming, you know. And uh, it's causing tremendous anxiety. I was wondering why devotees don't feel it as much, you know. And I think it's because it doesn't take long being associated with this movement of seriously practicing where you're kind of, your perspective is more on the eternal reality, you know? You, you, you realize, and you, <clears throat> you may not always act on it, but the basic foundation is we don't die. So there's going to be a future. The question is what kind of future? Whereas most people are completely on the material platform, and they, if they see that, uh, you know, like this whole uh, movement now among young people, this is this lady, this young girl from Sweden who's got everybody up, you know, millions of kids go out of strike because they're looking at, you know, 30, 40, 50 years down the road, it becomes unlivable in this world. I mean, it's science, they're looking at the science. Of course, we're hoping that by Krishna Kanda it's going to all be turned around. But, uh, and we're sure that there's going to be a 10,000 year blip in the Kali Yuga where Lord Chaitanya's movement is going to uh, flourish tremendously. But at least the way it looks, you know, is that there's a whole lot of doom out there. And, and the adults, those who are like, you know, 50, 60, well, I won't be around. You know, so their top priority is just staying comfortable, making money, you know. Basically, there's a tremendous uh, cruelty and hard-heartedness that's going on. Is that exactly the opposite of what you read about, about, about how all the sacrifice, you know, that, that actual Vaishnavas go through in order to help people? It's not just on the spiritual plane. All this, this uh, Prithu Maharaj's reign, he's also very concerned that everyone is nicely engaged in their duty, you know, that they're prospering. And because he's a wonderful devotee, just as Yudhishthira, the rains are coming at the right time, the demigods are all cooperating, you know. So that part of life is also uh, significant. So when that gets disturbed and people don't have any spiritual uh, suck, you know, help or, or uh, belief, uh, it becomes extremely anxiety, just like we want to go to Vaikuntha, a place of no anxiety. This is the place of increasing anxiety right now, this world. So, but, but, so therefore, you know, you, there's, there's actually a tremendous field of preaching because everybody is looking for some help. But, and we need to convince them that this is the, the actual place where you can get help. On a personal level, you can mitigate a lot of this anxiety. Because, you, you know, you, you may, the, the world may be burning up 
you know. But if you're chanting Hare Krishna, you still have a good future. You know, just like I told my mother, she's 95 years old, or 96, she's about to pass away. And she's asking, which she, part of the, uh, you know, every, every movement, every, every group has a certain lingo that they develop, you know. So, uh, in the 30s and 40s, when she and my husband were part of the communist movement, Set, uh, centered in New York, which is basically organizing labor and doing all kinds of things. It was still based on trying to help other people. Uh, but one of the things was asked, and this is coming down, is what, well, what is to be done? You know, what, what, what should we do now? In other words, let's not despair. Do we have to do something? What, what, what is to be done now? So, uh, so my mother asked me that. You know, she's like two weeks away from leaving her body. And she said, well, what's, what should we do now? You know, what, what's the plan? And I said, uh, well, I told her, I said, Mom, you have a very bright future. Because I think we had just chanted the japa. You heard it. I, I brought the tape. I should bring it sometime. Because, you know, obviously, you know, there's no material plan. This, the, your, your life is over, you know. <laughs> this life is over. But your life isn't over. You know, the, the, there's no plan for this body. All those plans are part of Maya's scheme to make you think that you can manipulate the material energy and somehow get a place of happiness and peace, you know, it's not going to happen, you know. They, all the plants come crashing down, material plants. So, here he's asking this, the central question, uh, how can we achieve the ultimate goal of life, the word chema? Now, chema uh, is, is, is part of a, uh, these words have different meanings, just like in, in English, you know. So, oftentimes it's, it's coupled with the word yoga. You've had yoga and chema, right? Krishna says, Ananyas Chindayanto Maam, Yedina Paripasate, Tesha Nitya Vyakamam, Yoga Kshema Vahamyaham. After he describes in the ninth chapter, which we're coming up on in the, in the evening class, how worshiping the demigods is not going to help. If you, if you, you know, worship assiduously and you do it just right, you may go to the heavenly planets and enjoy godly delights in Indra's in, in gardens and, you know, all these things. But then you're going to come down here again. It's still in the material world, and you're spending your punya. You're spending your pious credits by doing that. And then down you come, march your loka. He doesn't mince words, as Krishna never minces words, to this world of death. So what progress did you make? Katagatam, going and coming, going and coming. Material, material life is a, is a, is a series of uh, dead ends. You know, hopes for this, hopes for this. It's all ultimately crushed. Just like Lord, you know, Lord Krishna says in the ninth chapter also, for those who deride him, well, of course, we're not deriding him, but most people deride him or they ignore him, you know, or think he's mythological or it's not for me. So that's avajananti mamudha, they're fools. They don't understand Krishna. So what's the result? Moghasha, moga karmano, moga ganda bachetasa. Their hopes are all dashed. Moga means ruined. Their hopes, their cultivation of knowledge comes to nothing. Moga Moga Karma, their activities ultimately produce simply more suffering. That's the result. So we want, we want to get some real knowledge some, that'll work where we can have shema. This wealth of yoga shema in, that, in the next verse, the one I quoted, means that I personally, for those who are always meditating on me, I personally carry their yoga and shema. Now yoga and shema in this context means yoga, the things you need to live. You know, most people if, on the material plane if they have an, a nice dwelling, they have enough to eat, they have a job, a family, and they're temporarily happy. They're, sad, they're not in great anxiety. But those things are hard to come by now. You know, you, you're going along nicely, some big fire starts burning up. Like, Australia's finished. Have you been reading? It's, you know, several billion animals have been killed. It's, it's just insane. You know, it's, it's, it, it's, it's, you know, the result of this out, out of control material society, consumption, consumption, burning, 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 burning. So suddenly, you know, all of that, no, no, no yoga, no chema. Your, your basicness, and the chema is your safety, your, your security, you know. Now here the word is, is used to mean ultimate reality or ultimate benefit, or as Prabhupada says, ultimate goal of life. So that has to be asked. If you don't ask that question, you're not even coming to the human platform. This is the famous first question or famous first uh, sutra 
aphorism in the Vedanta Sutta. Atato Brahma Jigyasa. You know, now then, you know, Vedanta means like the end of knowledge. So there's a whole bunch of knowledge that came before it. All the Vedas, Puranas and everything. And so he says, now then, have, therefore, having come to this human form of life, you should inquire into Brahman. Brahman means the absolute truth. It doesn't necessarily mean Brahma Jyoti. That's one understanding of it. But Brahman more broadly includes Parabrahma, as, as Arjun says, Krishna, the Supreme Brahman. But Brahman means basically the source of everything. How, what, Janma Jasya Yataha. What is the source, Janma, and etc., Adi, maintenance and destruction. When you find that thing or that entity or that person uh, who is the source of everything, who, is, who exists before, during, and after the manifestation, that's the absolute truth. And that's exactly what Krishna says in the, in the Bhagavatam. You know, there's four essential verses of Bhagavatam. I can tell you the numbers after class in the second canto. And this is, the, this is the Bhagavatam that Krishna spoke to Brahma. You see? And Brahma shared with Narada, and, Narada and, 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 that, and Vyasa expanded it. So it starts out just like the four essential verses of the uh, Gita, 10, 8 to 11. Uh, it starts out with Krishna saying, Ahame vasame vagre nanyan yat sarasat param pashtaraham miretas yovishashita sosmiham. Before there was any manifestation, I existed. And when there is manifestation, that's just my energy manifestation. And when, it's, when there's no more manifestation, I wind it up, I will continue to exist. That means I am the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is the you know, essential quality, is that the cause of all causes, right in the first verse of the fifth chapter of the Brahma Samhita. So how, how can we know that? How can we reestablish that connection? How can we get rid of all the miseries caused by our illusory ab absorption in this material world and forgetting completely Krishna. This is, this is the, the larger implication of his question. And Prabhupada, you know, in this wonderful purport here, he is uh, giving us this essential instruction. He's describing himself. When saintly persons go from door to door to the, too much materially engaged, it's to be understood that they don't go for any, any personal benefit. So whose benefit are they going? For those persons who they're going to reach. Prabhupada came to New York City, late leaving his ideal situation in Vrindavan, on his own, you know, if he's, if he's just out for his own personal uh, advancement, or not advancement, but just uh, connection with Krishna, you know, he's a senior. There's plenty of others just like that, with their little comfortable positions there, chanting Hare Krishna. All right, that's fine. It's called Bhajananandi. But our line is filled with Goshyananandis. And Goshananandi is a Bhajananandi who preaches. Bhajananandi means one who gets all his bliss from Bhajan. And we all have to be Bhajananandis to some degree, you know, so that we're inspired to learn the philosophy and preach and help others. If we're tasting it, if we're actually experiencing more and more bliss by Krishna consciousness, then we'll have a lot more, that much more credibility when we try to give it to others. This is how this movement really spreads. We have all this philosophy, and if there's some examples, which Prabhupada was perfectly, uh, he can say, you know, he can really uh, plant the faith in people's hearts that there's something here. It's, you know, uh, this is how, you, how I was, I, uh, as you know, I've been around a long time, so I remember when Hatha Yoga was a thing, was just a new thing. That also didn't, you know, immediately take over the country like it is now. But, uh, People who have practiced it and they showed in their demeanor and their lifestyle and their bodies uh, how, how uh, you know, they benefited from it, then you have clarity, you can have uh, credibility. And more and more people started feeling the benefits and now it's all over the place, all over the world. It's a, mostly people do it for physical things or to relax, whatever, you know. But, uh, so that's even on a physical plane that works. What to speak of the, the actual spiritual plane of substance, you know? And that's why Prabhupada, he, he, he's, he's fighting, he's really on a battlefield. And the enemy is nothing physical, but it's all these false distortions of the Vedic knowledge that have been propagated for people coming for material benefit. Some, you know, some yogi, who, I'm not going to name names, but he was in Oregon, he had a whole place up there. It was a criminal enterprise. I've, I've read about it. I mean, they were even trying to murder the people in the local town so they'd take them over. It was, I'm telling you, 
it has happened. And uh, so many others, you know, just taking advantage, the hot yoga business, you know, where you take, where ladies take off most of their clothes. I mean, the guy was <laughs> totally corrupt, totally corrupt. But there's some effect, you know, you feel better, you know, okay. You know. All of that, Prabhupada is on a war path. When you hear him give lectures, especially in India, you know, and anywhere, he often rails against that. Because they're taking the same culture, sometimes even in the very Bhagavad Gita, and distorting it for some political purpose or some monetary purpose or some whatever purpose. So Prabhupada makes that point. They do not ask anything for their personal benefit. Just like uh, there's this wonderful uh, Ashtaka, eight verses about Nityananda. And uh, you know, he's the original guru. He's Balarama coming up on his nice and wonderful appearance day. Oh, he's a favorite day of mine. And so in this, in this Ashtaka, by Vrindavan Thakur, who was a disciple, he wrote the Chaitanya Bhagavat, which has a lot of pastimes with Nityananda. And so one of the verses, he approaches Lord Chaitanya, and he says, so that last line is the refrain. Sometimes there's a whole line, which in this case there is. So the last line, I wrote a poem, but I forgot the, the rest of it. But the last line is, O friends entrapped in Kali's clutches, yearning to break free, just worship Nityananda Ram, the root of the bhakti tree. He's the root of the bhakti tree because he's the original guru. So he, every, every bona fide spiritual master is a representative of Nityananda who's non-different from Balaram and gives you the spiritual strength to practice bhakti yoga. So what is he saying here? He approaches his brother, namely Lord Chaitanya. Uh, the people of this age are suffering so much that it's paining me so much. You know, I'm seeing that this Kali Yuga is degrading so much. I brought in Kali Kalashindam Kinda Babata. Please create some Prayas Chitta. Now, Prayas Chitta is explained in the sixth canto as a way of counteracting sin. But there's a broader meaning to Prayas Chitta, it means simply a means by which people can escape from sin and attain happiness and freedom. You know. So please create some means you know, by which they can easily approach your lotus feet and be happy. You know. So, of course, the means is Sankirtan. How do you know I'm saying Kirtan? So Lord Chaitanya had this formula, you know, that he would give to Nityananda and Haridas when they went out in, in Navadri preaching. You know this formula? Do you know my little English version? You can put the, make a t-shirt of that one. That one I'll probably wear. <laughs> uh, chant your Krishna's name and worship him with all your heart. Uh, oh yeah. Chant your Krishna's holy name, chant your Krishna's name and worship him with all your heart. Follow his instructions and to others them impart. So, so Nityananda would go around and they would, every householder, they would ask him to do that. You know? They were themselves doing it. Uh, follow his instructions. So, so Lord Chaitanya, he, he basically you know, creates a whole Sankirtan movement there. So the next verse Lord, uh, Nityananda is, is he's getting Yateshtamre Bratu. So he says there, now he's going around with Haridas, but he doesn't mention Haridas. He's going around home to home. My dear Lord, or my dear sir, you know, if you please, uh, chant the holy name of Hari without ceasing, or, you know. Vibrate Hari Hari day and night. And in this way, give to me your liberation from birth and death. These are the only alms that I request. Because all saintly persons, you know, at that time, I don't think he was married, like a sannyasi, you know, Abadut. It was understood. You give some, you know, food or water or something. He said, no, I don't want any alms that way. My only alms is your liberation from birth and death by chanting the holy name. So this is the ideal guru. He's the ideal saint, you see. So we're spent, meant to adopt that principle which Srila Prabhupada so perfectly embodied. Worldwide travels, never stopped. You know, even, even in the last days, miraculously, he goes to England. The devotees were shocked. He went there. He was emaciated, you know. couldn't hardly speak. But he wanted to be with his devotees. He wanted to go to Nubin, to, to Gidinagri, try to establish Varnashram. He saw that as a necessity. So this is, this is the ideal. And, and you can see how inspiring it is. 
The whole Christian religion is based on, 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 on Christ giving up his life for people's, you know, to clear people's sins. That's a, that's a, 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 you know, the most inspiring aspect of Christianity it, it, that is pushing people and, you know, uh, to, you know, hopefully take up a, a similar role. But that's, uh, so that's what Prabhupada says at first. Uh, they give real information of the auspicious, you know, like of, of the auspicious. What is the auspicious? Well, the first thing of auspicious is Krishna himself, right? He's the source of all auspiciousness. Just glorifying him brings you good fortune, makes you purified. So, but auspicious also is the way in which you can get close to Krishna. In other words, Sambandha Abhideya Priyojana, the knowledge of, of Krishna kindness. Who are you? Sambandha, who is the source of everything? Atato Brahman Jigyasa. Who am I? What is this world composed of? I'm just reading a little of the second canto. You know, that's Narada approaches Brahma and asks, you know, I see you meditating. Maybe there's someone superior to you. This is like Narada before he was enlightened, you know, before Brahma gave him all the knowledge. He says, yes, my son, it's true. I'm not supreme. You know, I seem to be. And he starts describing Krishna creating the Mahatattva, the way the different energies develop and all of this stuff. So uh, we, ne we need to be interested in that. And uh, the, 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 the great saintly devotees, they go around and, and inspire us to write, ask the right questions. And they give the whole package. They probably give the whole package. Some bandha abhideya priyojana. It's, here's, here are the, you know, the, the way the world was created. Here is all the answers to how everything came about, from the beginning with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here is the way you can know him. Prabhupada gives at the end of this purport, chanting the holy name. It's become so easy and simple in this age. You don't have to go to the Himalayas. You don't have to practice pranayama and all these things. You know. Just chant Hare Krishna. Everything starts there. Then you learn from, by the chanting, and you become a little purified, how to perfect the chanting, giving up the, uh, the attachments, giving up the offenses. You know? There's a whole process, the Abhideya process. You know? And it re requires the, uh, you know, the four principles of religion. I was just studying that in the first canto. I'm also over reviewing these canos that I've made some adjustments on. And these four principles, which are practically un unknown here. I, there's actually a little Sanskrit verse. Was it uh, tapas, shaucham, daya, satyam? Those were things. Austerity, cleanliness, uh, mercy, and truthfulness. Those are like four pillars of religion. And you can see how they're practically non existent today. Truthfulness, and truth itself is under, under uh, attack from all directions. But, you know, where you have to have a source that you trust that can actually give you the truth. And, and those, those who are known, who had some credibility, they, they, they monetize it. Oh, people believe us, good, then we'll sell them this. Believe, you know. In other words, they ruin the credibility and they pollute the truth and nobody knows where to go. This is another source of anxiety. You could imagine, if you couldn't trust anything. That's the whole point of, of, of this movement. The Prabhupada is, is, is you know, he, he's, he's giving the Bhagavad Gita as it is, he's giving the, the actual absolute truth that you can rely on, never cheats you. You know, Krishna never cheats you. Uh, or if he may seem to, but it's for our own benefit. He doesn't, he never cheats, you know, we, we were mistaken. So, he doesn't, he doesn't waste the time asking the Quranists for their welfare. Time is of the essence, every second counts. Uh, so, he, how can we be relieved from the dangerous position of material existence? This idea that there's danger. Danger means an immediate threat, you know, which means it's urgent. We're all in this urgent situation. What is that? Padam, padam, yad vipadam, natesha. This is a verse that uh, Shukadev speaks. And a wonderful description there. Uh, how, where can you find shelter from the danger? Ah, on the boat of the lotus feet of Krishna. You know, danger me like an ocean. In a storm, and you know, I, I must have died. I, I, I like to tell the story, and as I drowned in my last life, because ironically, I, I practically always lived near the ocean. I was born in, in, in Long Island. We used to go to Jones Beach, the five, you know, ten-minute drive from my house. I grew up near the ocean, but I never liked to go in. I was always so skinny, it was cold, or whatever, you know. And I didn't learn to swim until I had to when I went to college. 
Everyone had to know how to swim. So they learned how to swim. So, so then uh, eventually I end up uh, in, it, well, in Los Angeles. That was pretty cl close to the beach. But really, when I, when I was living in Miami Beach, literally 50 feet from the ocean in a little hotel, you know, I went in like six years, I went in 12 times. And that was just to like do some exercise, you know. <laughs> I've been here for 30 years. I haven't gotten once in that ocean. But anyway, this whole world is like this, this roiling ocean, you know, Bhava Sagara. Sagara means ocean, and Bhava means birth and death, change. So we're trying to find a steady place in the middle of the ocean, you know, and you can't find it. There's always some danger, there's always some change happening, you know, you just wait, and time is going to push you out, you know, and change everything. So realizing that, we should ask, is there, is there another platform to live on? Is there a place where there's, there, there's no danger? By Kunta, you know. And then, and, and Prabhupada, you know, and all the great Acharya is coming. Yes, 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 there is. And it's, uh, it's accessible to you. But you have to go through these steps, one, two, three, and four. That's basically it. And the whole thing key is on whether we have any faith. You know? And so all these books and, and, and the... the, the, the the uh, temples and the uh, traveling of the advanced devotees, like, you know, most advanced and even less advanced, but still advanced, are, are meant to give us uh, good instruction and examples of how one can actually live on that platform. So that's what, uh, you know, teach the, whenever one meets a great saintly person, immediately surrender and inquire. Don't waste time. And surrender, you know, means to, to surrender like Arjun surrendered. To, to be willing to hear submissively, this ardent submissive hearing. Inquire about the relief from the material pains of existence. Therefore, Shilin We're always suffering from the material pangs. So, Vishanale, uh, the, other, the other example is a blazing fire, another dangerous position. Forest fire, they're finding it in, in Australia, there's no place to go. They were taking shelter of the beach in the, near the ocean, you know, meanwhile, the old forests. Half of the country's burning up. Half of the people in that country are being affected by this fire. Yes. Yeah. All the major cities, they're all on the coast. See, most of it is just a big desert. Australia. You look at the. Anyway. So the great uh, acharyas like uh, Narutam and uh, Prabhupada, they always, uh, you know, the songs, the songs they're writing here. Uh, they're describing this dangerous position. And oftentimes they take the role of someone who's wasted time. Prabhupada's favorite song, what is that? Um, Hari Hari Vipale, John McGonagall, thank you. Uh, Vipale means uh, fruitless. I wasted my, li my life fruitlessly in pursuits of sense gratification. You know, Bhaktivinoda has a bunch of songs like that. Now in my old age, you know, I, and, and, uh, I'm still attached and all these things. You know, but they never end. There's, there's a certain form to these songs. It has, uh, there's some lala shamayi. There's a section of, of um, the nectar of devotion called submission. And everyone thinks it means, and even the editor thought that. <laughs> submission means, oh, submitting to Krishna. No. This vigyapti means submitting a report, submitting a, a plea. You see what I'm saying? That's what submission means. Yeah. So what is the submission? Different forms. One of is, uh, describing one's pitiable condition, you know, and then not describing a pitiable condition, but praying for enlightenment so that we're going to have the strength to practice bhakti. It's, it, you can see the importance of that because we can relate to that. Oftentimes we like to, you know, forget our actual condition, even as devotees. But really, we're, it's all very urgent. We should be very serious about knocking out all the, 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 the uh, impediments that are keeping us from advancing and, and going full bore. So that's what he's saying here. We're always suffering from material pangs. Our hearts are always burning, but we can't find any way out of it. So with that, with that mood, then we should approach Prabhupada's books. We should approach devotees. And what does that mean, you know? And of course, Prabhupada gives the, mean, the main means, chanting of the holy name. But how, you know, to take it really uh, very seriously. How can we improve our job? How, you know... How, how can I have more time in Kirtan? You know, well, I asked Bhadrinu Ramesh about Braj Mohan. He's, he's spending f f how many, four to six hours a day 
with its 24-hour kirtan. You know, I'm just praying that when, when the whole time is up and he comes back here, that he'd be willing to sp spend time here. You know, someone that fired up can immediately get kirtan going, you know, and attract people. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, so Krishna has made it so easy as Lord Chaitanya. You, you, faith or no faith, you know, most sinful, no sin. Just chant. Begin with the chanting. And the benefits are so strong and so powerful and so quick that you'll uh, experience something and your faith will be increased or intrigued and you'll want to keep going and improve, you know, ideally. In other words, it gives you an immediate, immediate, uh, tremendous spiritual lift, a shot in the arm. And so, but, uh, and then there's the whole aspect, as I mentioned, of trying to uh, perfect that chanting. That's really what we want to do. That's, that's the sum and substance, really, of uh, sadhana bhakti. And uh, we can achieve all perfection and love of God just by uh, focusing or centering on the holy name and everything that comes from it. When you, when you chant Hare Krishna and you realize, oh, Krishna is actually there, you know, on the altar. I should be there on time. Let's greet him nicely. Let's keep the place clean. Let's do all the things. Welcome the guests. Give the prasadam. Prasadam is giving you know, the deities of Krishna. It all centers on that. But the, the main thing is that to chant very nicely. That is the only auspicious way for materialistic persons. And I'm going to end there. Any comment, questions? Balaram is always ready with something. Keeps notes. Keeps notes in his mind. <laughs> Well, I see a notebook there. You're right. You might be writing stuff down. Yeah. That's, that's good. I should do that too. Go ahead. I'm ready for you. Uh, yeah, I was wondering about, like, this, you're talking about um, devotees traveling around. And, you know, some may say that, okay, well, it might be good for people to do that, you know, devotees to do that, like, for themselves, you know, whatever. They're not attached to their place, or it helps with detachment or whatever, you know, preaching. And, yeah. Um, but someone could say, that, well, well, isn't it good enough just to, you know, associate with one's local devotees? Like, why is it, why is it necessary to have somebody come in and, you know, preach to the devotees? And I mean, isn't it good enough just having local devotees? It's not, know? it's not one or the other. It's, it's, you know, or like there, they, they could say the importance of it, like the importance of you know, traveling preachers coming in and preaching and, you know, like the idea behind it, you know. Well, the idea behind it is that, you know, they're generally sannyasis who are doing it. Uh, and they can, uh, by their experience, by their erudition, you know, they can, they can inspire like anything. Like whenever Radha Swami comes, the place fills up, people are interested to hear, you know, it can have a tremendous impact. I mean, Prabhupada used that to the max, you know. I mean, the, you know, the whole thing with bringing the, 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 the Americans over, you know, the dancing white elephants. I mean, when it was just Prabhupada preaching, it was just as pure as anything. But people, you know, they, were, they said, oh, here's another Indian sadhu, you know, whatever. But when he brought the Americans over, it was like a whole, for whatever reason, they were attracted. It's almost like the Mahabharat. Nice stories, you know, let's read the nice story. Then you come across the, the Bhagavad Gita and you get... So they, they were attracted on the basis of the uh, uh, uniqueness of it and the newness of it. And they may, you know, uh, and then they, but they received the benefit, you know. So, so the same thing is there when you have traveling uh, preachers who come. Uh, just, just the people come just to be intrigued. Well, I haven't heard this one before, you know, I heard, or I heard about them, you know. And, and man, many of them are very potent because they're, they're purified. The very fact of making the sacrifice of traveling and preaching and not being, you know, secure in any spot, that itself is tapasya, which uh, will bring in more purification, more potency, you know. So it's a, it's, a, it's a very important tradition. That's why Lord Chaitanya took sannyas. He was already preaching wonderfully, you know, and, and sankirtan, but still there were people who were holding back and he wasn't reaching, you know, so he took sannyas, went all over there country and make thousands and millions of people. So it's, it's something we should respect and we should take advantage of. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's part of the tradition. Uh, but that doesn't mean that those who are 
you know, here, you know, for one reason or another, like I spend most of my time here, you know, my service, my main service is best done with all the facilities I have at the office, you know. And uh, so, but still, we should, we should uh, you know, try to advance, try to be strict in our sadhana, and try to uh, increase the members in the ashram. You know, I mean, people, we have young people coming, you know, older people coming, whoever. So it's not one or the other, but it's an important aspect of our movement, is that sannyasis travel, and people travel from center to center, and uh, enliven the devotees. I understand it. <laughs> All glory to Sri Prabhupada. Well, he's the original guru because he um, he imparts, you know, the the holy name, the truth, and he's a uh, conduit, you know, for the mercy of Krishna and the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. You know, it's very well said. You you can't get the mercy of Lord Chaitanya without getting the mercy of Lord Nityananda, meaning basically. You have to go through the spiritual master. You have to go through that period. 